What's up YouTube? Have you ever wondered how to use the Isometric Studio in Affinity Designer version 2? Well that's what we're here to talk about today. Welcome back, my name is Ben Nielsen, I'm a media design educator and today we're going to be talking all about how to use the Isometric Studio in Affinity Designer 2. Now, isometric design is one of the most fun kinds of design and you can make some really cool things and Affinity Designer makes it really easy to actually do this kind of work. A lot of times you have to be engaged in a lot of different types of math to make the projections work correctly, but Affinity Designer actually makes it a lot easier by taking out a lot of that math work and that kind of thing with the Isometric Studio. So we're going to dive in and talk about that, but before we do that, I just want to let you know that this video is part of my brand new course, Isometric Design in Affinity Designer version 2, which is available on Skillshare and on Gumroad from the links in the description below. So if you really enjoy this type of thing, go ahead and check that out and you'll learn all about how to do isometric design using Affinity Designer version 2. And don't forget to stay tuned to the end of the video for a special offer. All right, let's dive in and look at the isometric studio in Affinity Designer. Okay, in this video, we're going to go ahead and set up the isometric studio panel. Now the isometric studio panel is what makes it so we can avoid doing all that math that's involved in isometric projection. To open it up, you're going to go up to the window menu, which again, that's one of those top menus that you can't see in the screen recording, but it's just in the top left corner of your screen. Open up the window menu. Now you can see this here. We're going to go all the way down to the middle of the menu and choose isometric. This is going to open up a new studio panel. And you can see this studio panel is free floating right now, just kind of here in the workspace. Now, just like all studio panels, you could go ahead and drop it into these different zones over here on the right hand side. I'm just going to leave it over here for now because that will leave it very accessible as we are using it a lot while we're creating isometric art. Now the isometric studio panel is divided into two different sections. The first one is the planes. You're going to need to click enable planes to turn that on and now you're going to be able to cycle between the different planes. So remember when we were talking about what isometric art is, it's artwork that is projected into three different planes. So we have our top plane, which is what we're on right now. And now if we switch this to the side plane, you will see the grid adjust accordingly or to the front plane. So you can determine which plane you are working on by choosing from these buttons up here. And so you'll be switching through these periodically throughout your project. The second section down here is the plane editing options. So these are all of the actions that you can take on different objects in whatever plane you are currently selected on. The first one is just going to be a toggle that you turn on or off to let you edit in the plane. The second is a button which will take whichever object you have selected and project it into the plane. We don't have an object selected, so it's not doing anything right now. So let me go ahead and get an object so I can show you how these two work. First, I'm going to grab my rectangle tool from the left hand side and I'm going to turn on edit in the plane. Now when I drag out my rectangle, it's going to drag out in the top plane. So you can see it there and it will snap to the different portions of the grid as well. So that's edit in the plane. Let me turn that off. And now if I grab my rectangle tool and drag out another rectangle, you can see that it is not in the top plane, even though I have the top plane selected here. To put it in the top plane, I can now click the fit to plane. And now it, just like the other one, is in the fit to plane. And if I switch to my arrow tool, I can move it around within the plane. In a later video, we're going to talk about the difference between these two methods and when you might be choosing one over the other, but we'll be using both of them during this course. The other four buttons here are all of your flip and rotate options. So it's going to be very similar to these buttons that you find out here, only this one will flip and rotate based on which plane you are in. The last thing in this studio panel is the grid settings. This is just going to open up the exact same box that we saw before. And so you don't have to worry too much about that, except that occasionally when you are drawing, you may want to switch back to the standard because then you'll have standard snapping as opposed to isometric snapping but for now you can just leave this closed and that's it for opening up the isometric studio panel okay I hope you really enjoyed learning how the isometric studio works in a fan designer and that you are ready to go make some awesome isometric art of your own if you are interested in doing more of that remember that this video comes from my full course isometric art in Affinity Designer version 2, which you can check out using the links in the description below. If you choose to get that course on Gumroad, go ahead and use the code YT15 to get it for just $15. And now I want to hear from you. What do you think about isometric design and how Affinity has made it a little bit easier on us with the isometric panel? We'll chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.